The phone conversation between fantasy veterans Bob Harris and Matt Waldman is a quick and dirty rundown of players, units, or teams from Sunday's games. Feel it or fuck it is our instant verdict on the fantasy value of a player or situation, not the ability, effort, or character of the player. This is just how two old-timers in this industry talk when they got a lot of cover in a little time. Good morning, Matt. How are you today? You look tired. I feel tired. You know, I mean, thank you very much. So how about you? That's like the scariest costume I've seen all day. (laughs) It's not even a costume. Oh, my God. Wait till it gets to draft season. It might be (laughs) even scarier. Sawtooth. What is it? The sawtooth madman or something like that. I don't remember the I don't remember the line, (laughs) but, you know. The Walt Whitman might come out, that's for sure. So, <laughs> so you know, how about this? I know you have seemed to like him, but is Isaiah likely startable as a tight end? Uh, uh, fuck him. Unlikely. Uh, unless unless Mark Andrews is out. If I uh, feel it, if Mark Andrews is out, uh, fuck him if, he, if Mark Andrews is back. Uh, you know, look, there's going to be six teams on by this week. There might be desperation plays. I think he's that. But in general, you know, tight end position in general, there's a handful of guys that I think are reliable. He is not one of them, but might provide you upside. He's also one of those. He likely was good as um, a scramble drill player against the Buccaneers, who still have a weakened secondary. And like you said, without Mark, depending on Mark Andrews, that's how his fantasy um, value will travel. Uh, so I'm, I, yeah, fuck it. As DeMar- a related note, Demarcus Russell, or Robinson. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, Demarcus Robinson. What about that? Right. You like him? Yeah, no, I, I. But you know, I'll say it's a bye week option. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm Bad. feeling him as a bye week option. He's getting more and more targets. He seems to be functioning reasonably well in this offense because it seems like that what they ask him to do, which is run a route where it terminates with him just turning around, he seems to be able to get open underneath zones, and that's enough, or just kind of find his way across the zone he can do that um yeah, but maybe maybe so you know maybe it seems like Rashad Bateman is going to have a struggle staying healthy all along and there's going to be all those ancillary pieces in this passing attack during the buys we got like the 16 by this week and we have another one week 14 so these are the kind of pieces you might be forced to use people right deal so, with it. well listen you know one piece that seems like an every week possibility and and, and has proven to be one so far is Chris Godwin is a top 15 wide receiver. You feeling that? Yeah, PPR feeling it for sure. Even if this offense is crappy, even if Tom Brady is not the Tom Brady we've come to know and love over the course of our entire lives, or so it seems, uh, Chris Godwin is a is a real thing in PPR leagues. You can play that every damn week. Yeah, I think he's one of the best receivers in the NFL. And when I say one of the best, I'd say one of the top 15. Um, you can put him in there pretty safely. You can have an argument with him even as a top 10 guy. But Darius Slayton, my man, we've talked about him before. Um, are we evening out where he's at? Top 36 wide receiver moving forward? Would you dare go a little higher with him? Where are you on Darius? I, I mean, I think he's playable, right? I think So feeling top 36, right? Feeling him as a wide receiver three. Uh, feeling this offense is being pretty viable and in need of some weapons downfield. Daniel Jones proving to be at least serviceable, if not better than serviceable. Uh, for the most part, so yeah, I'm feeling this as a as a as a piece you can you can clip in and, and hope for something from. Yeah, I think he's the best overall wide receiver on that team right now. And while that's not saying much when you look at that depth chart, um, you know he's the one that is capable of making the most big plays in that offense, as well as the some of the tougher plays in the middle of the field. He can do a lot of that too. Still not the most consistent guy, but top 36, you don't need to be. Um, Wandale Robinson, though, is he also a top 36 moving forward, or where are you feeling that? I'm feeling him as more of a speculative. I mean, we're hoping that role gets more robust. I mean, in some weeks it probably will be. Some weeks maybe it won't be because of maybe Darius Layton. But, but I do think the plans are for him to get that level of work. So I'm feeling him as a speculative play that I hope has some more upside. Fuck it, I don't want him. I, I mean, I get where you're. I'm getting where you're coming from, but maybe it's because I'm playing the old cranky man at this point to this morning. But I, I look at his game too inconsistent, and I think the production's going to be too inconsistent. By week player, I'll, I'll take the chance on, but fuck him is in my starting lineup if, unless I have to. Um, Jared Goff, are you feeling him as a starter? 
Uh, yes, feeling him as a starter, uh, realizing the potential downside. The, uh, we, and we've seen it the two weeks prior to this week, the single-digit outputs. But other than that, in the season where quarterback scoring is down across the board, right? I, I mean, love it. you know, fantasy quarterbacks <laughs> are down. At, you know, you, last year, if you got 20 points out of your quarterback, you went, damn right, I got 20 points out of my quarterback. That's what I'm supposed to get. You get 20 points this year, you're going, holy crap, I got 20 points. This is a bonanza. And in more games, uh, more often than not, uh, Jared Goff has been in that 20-plus point range. And uh, and I'll take that upside, especially with a defense that bad. Feeling you, Jared Goff. Feeling yeah, you. I'm feeling the pockets that he gets from the Detroit Lions offensive line. I'm feeling what this team is able to do with him. I'm feeling the decisions that he's making for the most part. And um, I'm feeling the fact that there's there's a um, defenses are actually putting up a fight against these offenses. I'm I I, I do want to say fuck the NFL because it, it, if this keeps up for another year, um, heck, the way the the NFL is, if it keeps up for another three months, <clears throat> um, they're gonna change the rules, right? You know, to to try, you know, they might outlaw cover two at this point, which is just fuck the NFL for even dare thinking that you know half the owners in the league probably are um jamal williams starter fantasy starter feeling it feeling it yeah i mean he is uh, again we're going to be going through the trails of the, the heavy bye week this week but in addition there's attrition all kinds of things going out of position I'll, I'll say this this is uh, this week is uh, as i've been saying it's fraught with peril uh because we don't know how the trades are going to play out over the course of the next day or so and that may change some situations it's not going to change his though Right. I mean, there's lots of pieces out there where you think, wow, is this going to be the same after, you know, we get through the trade deadline <clears throat> in Detroit's case, nothing's going to change there. And that role has been solid, whether DeAndre Swift is there or not feel Jamal Williams. Oh, well, I'm totally feeling Jamal Williams. I've always been feeling Jamal Williams. And uh, I think he's a better receiver than DeAndre Swift. I, um, but they're not going to use him as such because he's not as um, dynamic as an open field player. Um, more powerful than DeAndre Swift. I think he's also has a little bit better vision than DeAndre Swift. What he doesn't have is that that initial quickness and and speed <clears throat> that DeAndre Swift has in the open field. So they're a good complement to one another. Um, Hunter Renfro, feeling him even for a roster spot? I am not. Fuck him. No, not fuck him. But you know, the, it's the role again, as we always say. And I talked to Vic Taper from, Taper from the Athletic yesterday. And, you know, he said, look, he's, you know, working his way back from that concussion was a pretty bad concussion. He's getting up to speed. He's got a little hip, bit of a hip issue. All those things, you know, I think are perfectly reasonable excuses for him maybe working his way back up. But I think the bigger issue for me is this is not the offense we'd hoped it was or, or would be. Uh, it's Josh Jacobs heavy, and I don't think that's going to change. And Devontae Adams at the top of the food chain, even though that doesn't always pan out every week, according to yesterday. Um it's just hard for me to count on pieces in this receiving core, not named Devontae Adams on a week in week out basis. So if I find people that I think might contribute on any given week, see you Hunter. I'll say this fuck the, for those interested in the NFL draft again, with these two high shells and the way the, the ran, the Raiders have had success running the football, using a fullback, using a second tight end, um, a lot of eye formation with two receivers, um, Fuck the idea of Hunter Renfro as even a draft prospect in the future, talking about the small, shifty slot receivers, because more and more teams might be opting for fullbacks at the stage that we're going. And full, as we see, though, NFL is scared of the idea of a fullback revolution. Um, so, I, I, you know, there only needs to be one or two as a novelty. If every team's starting to use them, I have a feeling that they're going to change the rules. But and, and for right now, yeah, the ra way the Raiders use them, fuck it. Rashid Shaheed, worth a roster spot? I, I feel him. I do not feel his role. I mean, he is crazy efficient, right? <laughs> it's either a <laughs> touchdown or it's a catch every damn time they throw him the football. Maybe at some point they'll start throwing it to him more. Until they do, fuck him. Uh, and uh, and many pieces in the Saints offense. They always have a guy like Rashid Rashid Shahid. You know, it seems like every Robert year. Beecham, the, the, um, Deontay Harris, Deontay Hardy. You know, whoever you want to you put in there, Rashid Shahid is in that role. So yeah, for fantasy, fuck it. Um, Khalif Raymond. He's him seen, too. 
Him too. <laughs> I'm easier. You know, there may be a little more of a role, maybe a little more meat on the bone there for him. So um, I could see getting through a bye. As a general rule, expecting consistent production from anybody there not named Amon Ross St. Brown in that receiving core. You're taking your chances. Even Josh Reynolds, who seems to have a, a better role. But Josh, catch all the footballs they throw to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> Fuck it. So Sam Ellinger. Like the idea of him over Matt Ryan and Indy? <laughs> I'm I'm torn. Honestly, I'm torn because Matt Ryan was obviously, you know, having his struggles. I understand why they're doing it. Uh, and I understand maybe seeing the potential upside in Sam Ellinger, who ran for 33 touchdowns during his collegiate career. You're looking for a little more mobility. He has that. Um, <clears throat> he's got a ways to go. Uh, that said, uh, feeling that he was able to keep some of the pieces that I'm interested in, you know, relevant at the very least and so so generally i'm feeling this uh, you know specific to the question over matt ryan and indy for what indy yeah. is right now i am totally feeling this and it turned out to the best case scenario last week against washington because he was better in the pocket against blindside pressure he was he allowed them to activate a lot more options in their running game because they had to play every player including the quarterback so they used more option oriented looks that Matt Ryan would not be believable in doing he was better in the red zone than Matt Ryan as a result of that and that activated Jonathan Taylor and it kept um, Paris Campbell viable and he even that. hit Alec Pierce in the uh, deep game too. which I was, was the which was the which was the I thing was that I was yeah that's the thing I was saying is if he can do that now you're looking at some complete things here and look after right, Michael Pittman got his nine targets. I mean, everything, yeah, everything that, that I happened. was looking for happened, right? L listen, even when Taylor Heineke, when he pulled that game out of his Heineke, they had, <laughs> they he answered with a beautiful pass over the middle to Pittman who dropped it. That would have put them yep. in field goal range to win that game. So, yeah, I'm feeling Sam Ellinger at and possibly next week we might be visit revisiting whether we review him as at least a bye week starter. Right. Dallas Goddard, elite tight end. Feeling it? Fuck that. There's only two elite tight ends. Their names are Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews. And uh, and the rest, everybody else, like, might have elite production on occasion. But if you're putting them in the truly elite category, I like his role. I like his abilities. I don't think he's, I don't think he should be viewed as elite because I'm defining elite as a very narrow band of players right now. Because the, the only two players really deserve that that category to me. I see. I'd say he. I agree. He's just outside that. I think if he were in a different offense, he might get to prove different. He might get to prove a little bit more. But this offense yeah. is going to limit him in terms of the way it works. Are you feeling the taunting rule that led to a penalty on DJ Moore? I just no, want... fuck that. That's ridiculous. But uh, but also but also DJ Moore. You know, it's a rule. You know, just. To, to, can't get caught up in that moment and cost your team a game, you know, and you could say the NFL cost me a game, fine, whatever you want to say, you can't do that, right? He knows that. I know he was despondent over it, and you hate to see a young man put in that position when, you know, look, it was a great play. P.J. Walker was not, you know, totally a mirage, at least has not proven to be yet. He has not evaporated, so I'm excited about a lot of things, and I'm excited for those players, uh, but you got to play by the rules. So NFL, uh, that's probably a rule you could adjust. Yeah, I, I couldn't say anything better on that. I think that's perfectly stated. George Kittle. Now, what about him? Why isn't he an elite fantasy tight end, Bob Harris? He may well end up climbing back into that category, and here's why. Uh, Kyle Shanahan said it, he's, and he's not wrong. Kyle Shanahan knows a little bit more about football than me, probably. Um, uh, Christian McCaffrey is what he called a force multiplier. I can see that, right? I see how that's working. I can see that going to have an impact. I think teams are going to have a have their hands full with this offense when all the pieces are in place, including Debo Samuel. And that, you know, so if we're going to roll that out, Matt, into the uh, range of viable quarterbacks, Jimmy Garoppolo's force is going to be multiplied too uh, going forward. And if you look at his scoring on a week-to-week -week basis, he's going to be a player you want to have in your lineup so more often than you think. So watch that. But George Kittle as a guy that's going to be, you know, maybe his abilities are elite. The role may become more so uh, as we get go forward with Christian McCaffrey on board. Yeah, usually we see quarterbacks being the force mo multiplier. But yes, running backs can be a force multiplier too. And he's certainly one of those great examples of doing that. There was a great play where basically um, McCaffrey runs a route on the same side of the field as Kittle. 
and the linebacker jumps the McCaffrey route and lets Kittle run right by him into a mm, wide yep. open void in the zone. Um, so yeah, um, if George Kittle were in any uh, most other offenses other than the Eagles, he would probably be an elite fantasy tight end. Um, he might even be a little bit over Goddard even in that offense. Um, but you know, he, with McCaffrey, it's for sure now. DeAndre yep. Hopkins finishing as a wide receiver one. Is he going to just hop in and instant wide receiver one down the stretch? Not overall, but like, you know, top 12. Well, this is where I should go. Fuck me. Uh, I apologize humbly, DeAndre Hopkins, for suggesting you might not be the player you once were uh, as you were uh, spending your time uh, on suspension. I felt like last year, maybe the injury situation that father time was catching up with you and maybe the evolution of this offense kyler murray seemed to be looking at other players and his reads and progressions uh, all those things are untrue and you sir are a wide receiver one for the rest of the season congratulations you audrey hopkins and fuck bob harris yeah, he, he he said fuck everybody for the most part <laughs> and that's what i loved about him and his game's always been that way because he is <laughs> he's slower he does not run some of the fancier Stefan Diggs types of routes in terms of like the movement. He's not electric or mercurial with his movements, but man, he understands how to run around. He's physical as all get out. Um, he has great tracking and he, on, on top of that, he knows how to cheat, which is something that I would say for the most part, I don't particularly like in, got caught in, a little life, yesterday. in life, <laughs> but I'll say this. In, in in the reality of football where you've got to press that envelope and know where all the angles of advantage are, he like he his, does. his his cohort <laughs> on defense, Jalen Ramsey, they right. know how to cheat. And that's why it's so much fun to watch them because he will mug you right back. And he posterized Harrison Smith and that none of that was cheating. That was that was beautiful. I totally feeling him as a wide receiver one. <laughs> Kareem Hunt to the Rams possibility. Feeling Fuck that? that. Nobody no. deserves to run behind that offensive line. <laughs> uh I want Kareem Hunt to have quality touches. <clears throat> uh you know, this look, number one, if Kareem Hunt is available for a fourth round pick, I'm gonna come up with a fourth round pick and acquire him for my team. And I don't even have a team, right? That seems like incredibly reasonable uh payment for a player of that caliber uh, especially if you're in a hurting offense i'm sure the rams are going to be willing to uh to do whatever it takes to get him or at least be in the mix they were in the mix for mccaffrey so i don't know why would they wouldn't be in the mix here but i think there could be better landing spots for me yeah i'm feeling the idea that he's going to go there fuck yep. it that he's going to have to be there um but what about the other some alternatives one of them i keep hearing is some people saying cream hunt back to the chiefs Never happened, but I would feel it if they did. <laughs> I would totally feel it. I would be bailing on all my uh, CEH and Isaiah Pacheco shares, and except I'm keeping Jarek McKinnon. Nobody can make me unpry my hands from him. I would, I would find that to be fucking crazy for him to wind up back there for the, after him getting sent packing in the first place. That would be, I, I, I can't conceive of that happening. Care, but. Speaking of ch new Chiefs, Kadarius Tony feeling that? Sort of. I mean, to the degree <laughs> that you can feel Kadarius Tony, like he hasn't made himself felt much. But uh, again, I'll just say this: we we have seen Kadarius Tony, you, you know, his entire range of uh, abilities in a microcosm in the Dallas game last year, where he, you know, caught ten for one hundred ninety yards and punched somebody in the head and got kicked out of the game. There you have it. That's him. Yeah, I would say that's exactly right. I, so I'm feeling the idea. Uh, you know, in terms of the reality, fuck it until he proves otherwise. That's because he had Brian Dable. And Brian Dable, listen, Brian Dable turned Stefan Diggs into a wonder. And Diggs certainly had that promise. He displayed it in Minnesota. But, I mean, Dable's offense made a, a really good player into a great player. He made a really good prospect into a great player in Josh Allen. You, you had a golden opportunity with him. Yep. Yeah, so fuck it until he proves otherwise. Ramondre Stevenson, featured back. Will they finally have a featured back since Corey Dillon? Am I am I going too far back for, uh, for that? I, you know, I go back to Antoine Smith, so no, you're not going back too far. Good, there we go. Uh, I remember those <laughs> days too. Those were fun. <laughs> um, you know, you know, I'm not looking or eager to bail on the uh, my fellow Harris's. Uh, but uh, here's, I guess, here's what we're feeling is a hope for trade to a, 
a reasonable destination for Damian Harris who would truly clear the decks for Ramondre Stevenson, who deserves a featured role. He looks like he's earned it. I don't know if he's going to have it for as long as Harris is there. It's going to be some form of split. It will be some form of split, but I'm I'm leaning towards feeling it more than I am towards fuck it at this point. So, um, but yeah, I I can't say I'm totally on. You, you know, if I had to get if I had to like had to commit, then I'd say fuck it. But but I'm but I'm trying to hedge towards feeling it. Joe Flacco or Mike White over Zach Wilson? Are you feeling the idea of them replacing Zach Wilson? <laughs> I mean, I'm feeling it as a fantasy manager. Elijah Moore is uh, on my side on this one. He will stump with me for this. Um, but it's not going to happen. They're not going away from Zach Wilson. Uh, you know, the Jets have said, fuck it. We're all in on this kid. Uh, we're going to go through the it's hard times. It's beginning and- to smell a lot like <laughs> Baker. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But but I, I mean, they're pot committed for the time being. I You know, I, I don't see him making a change. I would love to see him do it. And I hope they have... I hope they, you know, can look within and say, yes, okay, this experiment has failed. Let's go on to the next thing and cobble something together with the other pieces in place, but I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, fuck it. That defense is too good for them to put up with this. They've got too many good skill players to put up with this. And, you know, Zach Wilson, you know, I wish him the best of luck, but it, it shouldn't be as a it shouldn't be as a starter in New York with a team that while they have a tough schedule ahead, has an opportunity to be a playoff worthy team. And I know that Joe Flacco isn't exactly going to light the world on fire for you. And he's a st- human statue in the pocket. Um, but he does activate other, other offenses there. I wouldn't yep. necessarily call him a force multiplier, but relative to Zach Wilson, he is a force multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> but Bob Harris, you've always been a force b- multiplier, my friend. I got to mm. get out of here. All right. Love you. Goodbye. Love you. Bye.